Steve Hecht, editor-at-large of the Impunity Observer, and I'm going to relate to you my most recent article on BizPack Review. That's a uh, U.S. Florida website. The title is The Week U.S. Media Caught On to State Department Criminality in Guatemala. Honest Guatemala Attorney General is David versus Goliath. A few of us have been working in the trenches for years to make known State Department criminality in Guatemala. This month, the story broke to a vast audience, thanks to two exposés by U.S. journalists. Americans need action now, congressional investigations, and heads rolling. On May 7th, 11 House members sent a letter to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken highlighting anti-American State Department behavior in Guatemala. Shortly thereafter, Tucker Carlson and Robbie Starbuck published videos, including in-depth interviews on the same topic. These developments complement the work in BizPack Review and the Impunity Observer regarding the foreign policy establishment's betrayal of our country. Tucker Carlson gives the CSIG a day in the sun. Carlson interviewed former Guatemala Secretary of Intelligence from 2016 to 2020, Mario Duarte, about his firsthand experience of State Department imposition on Guatemala. Duarte, also a U.S. citizen, said the State Department has weaponized the government to force upon allied nations its ideological projects and socialist narratives. Duarte identified as part of the State Department attack the UN created International Commission Against the Impunity in Guatemala, known as CSIG. He called CSIG a political persecution tool that specifically targeted conservative people under the guise of fighting corruption. More recently, the State Department has employed throughout the region direct threats, including taking away visas and different types of sanctions. The intent is to coerce people to toe the line to whatever narrative the State Department has that day. The State Department has a pervasive network of non-governmental organizations and international institutions that cooperate with it. Duarte mentioned that under the guise of fighting corruption and countering narcotics, the State Department imposed socialist agenda ideas, gender ideology, and others align with the globalist United Nations agenda. Duarte said that despite the State Department spending hundreds of millions of dollars on counter-narcotics, it has nothing to show for it. Asked by Carlson to name some of the NGOs interfering in Guatemala, Duarte replied that one among many is the Soros Foundation, presumably referring to the Soros-backed Open Society Foundations. Carlson asked if the State Department had knowledge of NGOs helping illegal migrants go to the United States from Central America. Duarte replied, not only with the knowledge of the State Department, but several of those NGOs were also getting money and are still getting money from USAID. Duarte says the State Department has many tools to coerce Latin American leaders, and they apply them to elections. Duarte said the 2023 elections were marred by corruption inside the electoral authority. Carlson asked, did Joe Biden administration help cover up voter fraud? Yes, said Duarte. The Biden regime definitely covered up for the president that supposedly won and actively tried to block the investigations of the fraudulent electoral process. The State Department sanctioned the investigating prosecutors. It summoned Guatemalans to the U.S. Embassy and threatened them and their businesses if they did not push for the investigations to stop, which is a felony. Carlson responded that it is so corrupt, it is sad to hear. Robbie Starbuck eyes the State Department ties to child trafficking. Starbuck's interview of Angel Pineda the General Secretary of Guatemala's Attorney General's Office, mentioned some of the same points as Duarte. According to Pineda, the State Department cut cooperation with the Attorney General's Office and sanctioned him and Attorney General Consuelo Porras 
after she and Pineda fired 15 Attorney General Office personnel. Pineda added that not working with the Attorney General's Office adversely affects U.S. interests regarding combating transnational crime. Starbuck read a letter from Pineda to Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton requesting cooperation in investigating child sexual abuse and trafficking from Guatemala to Texas. Starbuck said Pineda had been warned by someone connected to the U.S. Embassy that he was, quote, playing with fire, unquote, by giving this interview. Pressed by Starbuck for details, Pineda said, you can interpret it in any manner. It will not stop the work, but yes, I have to protect myself, protect my family. Pineda stated that the Attorney General's office is investigating the financing of intimidating protesters active from October through January. Attorney General office personnel and the public were prevented from accessing Attorney General offices throughout the country. Pineda tied this to the Attorney General's office investigating the electoral fraud Duarte mentioned, which has been amply reported in these pages, that is, BizPAC Review, also the Impunity Observer. The association Liga Pro Patria, a rule of law society, linked the violent protest to the State Department. The Liga also said this is sedition and attributes it to the Biden regime's desperation to remove Porras as Attorney General, hide its crimes, and keep Arevalo illegally in the presidency. He would be removed if the laws were properly applied. On May 5th, Porras petitioned Guatemala's highest court for an injunction against Arevalo for unconstitutionally trying to remove her from office. She told the court that there was a real, certain, and imminent threat that Arevalo's unlawful measures could result in attacks against her physical integrity and life. The court immediately granted the injunction. Also on May 5th, Guatemalan congressional leaders met at the U.S. ambassador's residence to discuss legislation intended to remove Porras from office. On May 6th, Arevalo presented the legislation, taking a stand in Congress. The 11 U.S. representatives asked Blinken if, the, if State Department officials had been involved in promoting Arevalo's legislative priorities. They also asked whether State Department or USAID officials had met with or invited members of Guatemala's Congress to the embassy or ambassador's residence for this purpose. In Starbucks' conclusion, he says, if the Biden administration gets what it wants, Porras will be replaced by Biden administration loyalists. Acting faithfully to her office pits Porras against the amoral Biden regime. She puts her life on the line for her principles and is not only a priceless asset to her country, but also to ours. The House must go beyond letters. Investigations of U.S. actions in Guatemala would uncover Biden's personal corruption and State Department treason. The same goes for State Department and Biden regime complicity in the flows of illegal migrants and narcotics to undermine our republic. Such exposure would impede the foreign policy establishment's future ability to betray us. Hi, Tucker. Would you like a story of State Department treason that would make it much more difficult for the foreign policy establishment to betray us in the future? If so, please contact me.